Hi everyone, what is happening? Uh, today what I want to speak about is Amazon's S3 service. So Amazon's S3 is the Amazon symbol storage service that is offered by Amazon. Um, so it's basically um, storage services that is hosted entirely on Amazon. Uh, they do provide around 99 percentage of uptime. Uh, so there is a wide variety of uh, applications that get, that you can use with S3 like storage, archiving, uh, data backup, data lakes, mobile applications, IoT. There is a whole bunch of uh, use cases that you can do with Amazon's uh, S3. Right. So what I want to speak about today is how you could use Amazon's S3 on Splunk. So Splunk actually do support S3. So we call it the Splunk Smart Store, right? Um, so Smart Store is actually a service provided by Splunk, but it's not unique to Amazon. Uh, you can use the same Smart Store for uh, Smart Store with GCP as well, uh, or you can do it on your local uh, hard drive as well. Uh, I mean, the local SAN storage as long as the services are supported. So. Uh, Am uh, Splunk do ship with a mechanism where you can actually use these kind of uh, third-party services for uh, storing your data. Uh, so the first thing is why do you actually have to use it? Uh, so the thing is, uh, so you have large licenses installed on your Splunk devices, uh, and then you yourself manage all your storage um over time right um the storages get full you have to uh, look after the storage you have to maintain your san nas networks um and it's not cheap uh, buying new hard drives are not cheap uh, maintaining them are not cheap uh, so yeah amazon s3 might be a good solution uh, that you could integrate um, Splunk Cloud runs on Amazon S3. Uh, the entire uh, backing up storage, everything is done by uh, Amazon S3. So it's uh, very well documented, very well supported uh, solution. A uh, few other advantages are reduction of cost, obviously. Um, Amazon S3 is not that expensive. Um, so they do come with a whole variety of packages that you can use. Um, so uh, on the longer run it is not expensive uh, to maintain a s3 uh, so faster recovery from peer failures uh, faster data rebalancing in case of a failure um, simplified upgrades things like that um, so you the way it works is um, Splunk do have uh, when data comes to Splunk right um, it comes, uh, it comes, it gets returned to the indexes. It creates buckets. So first, the hot buckets are created. Then it hot, then it goes to warm and cold, and then it goes to frozen, right? Um, so in Amazon S3, or when you enable Smart Store, what is happening is data still still comes to the indexes. It goes to the hot buckets. From there. Um, when it rolls, it goes to uh, Amazon's S3. It doesn't get stored on your uh, local box anymore. So there's no warm and cold. Everything is managed by um, the cluster master. So a new console get introduced called the cache manager. Uh, so basically what it is is uh, cache managers manages all the data flow between your on-premise and your Amazon's uh, S3. So um, there's a lot of uh, theory in um, uh, theory and uh, and uh, 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 that you have to uh, understand before you start this journey. And it's always recommended that you engage professional services um, before you start this journey. A few key key things to keep in mind is um, it is initialization is going to be heavy. Uh, so when you start your migration, your indexes, 
are going to uh, indices processors are going to go through the roof uh, your search might be impacted until the migration is completed um, so the, be calculate around 30 to 40 percent degradation of your search until the uh, migration is completed right uh, and then the most important thing is it's a one-way journey that is if you move to smart store you can't get the data back on premise right so it is not a setting that you take um, lightly all right so this this have to be a decision that you, you that you think about and then you decide once you decide it you don't go back on that right um, that is why I said uh, it is best if you want to go down this route you engage with professional services and uh, professional services will guide you on uh, your S3 journey right um, so I what I want to show you today is how to do a simple um, smart show um, so what we have here is a two indexer cluster uh, so we have uh, two indexes here uh, there's nothing here there's no data here I did configure two indexes so the way it works is um, so let's log on to the cluster master um, so I'll put the link to the documentation on um, S3 uh, and smart show uh, so you can go through it and you'll get a better understanding of all the key settings what I want to show you is the few settings that you would actually need to uh, get your s3 working right uh, so there's one setting that i already done is my credentials for my s3 so what you would need is a api use uh, the api key and the uh, C api secret that you would have to configure uh, so other than that what we have to do is i'm go this is on my cluster master i'm going to create a new app here yes so Okay, so I'm going to create the indexes conf here. Uh, so I'll explain what each uh, switch is going to do. Yeah, so this is basically how your setting will look like. Uh, so you obviously have to set your rep factor to auto. Um, without it, it doesn't replicate your data. So here we are defining a new uh, volume called uh, a remote stock so it can be a, any generic name as long as you keep track of it so we are just defining it as remote uh, so yes uh, s3 encryption so this is a important uh, option so there is three or four different types of encryption that you can use so this is encryption of data on rest so basically what it means is any data that goes to s3 you can decide if you want to encrypt the data on s3 or not right uh, so there's other, other options are um, SSE S3 SSE C uh, and then SSE KMS so basically what what these three things mean is SSE S3 is an encryption where uh, the encryption of your data is handled by S3 right uh, so other option is SSE KMS uh, then the next option is SSE uh, C so SSE C is where the encryption is handled by uh, a certificate that is defined by you right? like the user the all three options are very well documented on the Splunk docs you can have a look uh, so for simplicity I'm using S3 um, so you should see which one is uh, best for your environment before starting it uh, so this is my path so I created a bucket called uh, Rinjits S3 right so this is how I define my path S3 and then this is where the my data should be backed up right uh, so that is actually it and then I define my S3 endpoint so uh, you have to get your S3 endpoint uh, URL you can get it from your uh, AWS console alright you can get this value from AWS console 
uh, once you get that uh, then there's the other two settings are your defining your uh, remote s3's um, secret key and your api key so i haven't put it here yet uh, so that is what what is on my other index uh, so on this index i just define like this and then on the actual index i'm defining like this okay so uh, splunk db and then linux and then like this so basically what it works is default default is your remote store right so your default location is your remote store and your remote store volume is actually a s3 so that is why i uh, i'm just defining like splunk db without actually calling here like remote store so i can just keep defining new indexes and uh, i don't have to call uh, remote store all the time so it works like that okay so that's it um so what what we can do is um so this is done i'm going to save this uh, and then I let me exit from this one and then i'm going to apply faster bundle uh oh okay splunk is running as well Yeah, don't run your Splunk environment as, as root. This is my test environment. That is why I'm running it as root. And uh, yeah, it is, uh, mm, it's always recommended that you run it as a Splunk user. Okay, so in the background, we can see our peers restarting, right? Uh, so SFRF is already met. Uh, so let's see what is happening on our, uh, on our logs. Okay, so peer restart is in progress. So that is happening, peer is restarting. Okay, so let's log on to our uh, indexer one. Okay, so this one is started up. Uh, so let's quickly check here. So we're just waiting for uh, the values to be loaded it might take three or four minutes to uh, get this done uh, so let's go to our s3 quickly and then we can check if uh, data started showing up okay so this is my uh, aws s3 all right uh, so what is happening is uh, so the the folder already got created dengit s3 and then backup see all my internal um, logs are already replicated onto my uh, storage uh, s3 storage right so if i go to internal and then if i check anything or i can see my logs here i can see my bucket i can see my logs right uh, everything is here right um, so yeah actually it's a simple setup to um, to do um, you can there's a whole bunch of options that you can do like different types of encryption things like that but then always remember it is although it, it was quite simple to do here it is not a easy step to take uh, moving away from your local storage to Amazon S3 it's quite a big decision uh, so it, that's why it's always best to um, engage professional services or work with your sales team uh, to find out uh, about different options they, they will actually guide you on all the pros on and cons of moving to S3 right uh, so you should have a good understanding of how everything works and then yeah uh, one last thing i wanted to show you is um, 
so if you take any file here yeah, let's take a file okay so we can uh, what I'm looking for here yeah server side encryption so server side encryption is SSES 3 right uh, so what I want to show you is uh, let's just hold here for a second um, so the way it works is um, let's say new data streams onto your indexes or onto your storage tier right it doesn't actually go to s3 uh, automatically only the warm and cold data goes to s3 right uh, so the concept here is when you you search for the latest data right so let's say a firewall is sending logs today what is happening is it comes to your storage it is stored locally so when you run the search you get the results faster right um, so after a pre set period of time the hot buckets roll to warm so when that when that happens instead of rolling to warm it gets sent to s3 so that is done by the cache manager right and then when you're let's say you're running a search with 30 days of data you're trying to look back uh, for 30 days of data right uh, so what is happening is first seven days of data it is going to pull from your local storage and the remaining days of data is going to stream from s3 back to your uh, indexer right so obviously you ha need to have good internal connections um, and things like that uh, for that to work um, so yeah uh, so what let's do something like this uh, so I'm going to log in here just remember this is a um, test environment and I'm going to flash it anyway that's why I'm I have my web UI on for my indexer uh, what I'm going to do is I want to get some data into this box and I'll show you how that replication happens so right now uh if we go back here so we only have these four indexes right uh, so let's upload some data i'm going to upload any data it actually doesn't matter because we're just testing uh yeah so i'll just upload this file for now I'm going to just leave it as any any source tape. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so then I'm going to just in uh, put it on a Linux index, right? So I'm going to put it on Linux index, create it now. Okay. So then the data is actually um, in your index of one, right? Uh, so if you go to S3. Uh, if you go back to S3 and if you do a refresh the Linux folder is not created the reason is it's actually the data is actually sitting on your uh, hot bucket it hasn't rolled it so if you know how the data flow happens either a set time have to reach or your index have to restart right so we don't have to wait for uh, a certain time let's actually just uh, do a rolling restart so this one will actually uh, force your um, yeah it, this one will actually force your uh, indexes to restart all right so i'm going to do a rolling restart now and then we'll see what happens right um okay so the cluster master picked up the indexer now Uh, while we are waiting for that, uh, there is a really good uh, article on Smart Store uh, done uh, on Splunk Conf. I'll leave the link to that document. You can have a look. Uh, so it's really a good uh, conf uh, uh, the uh, good presentation that was done. 
so it will actually give you a very good understanding of how the whole smart store works and what to expect right okay so the data have rolled uh, so let's go back to our uh, smart store on uh, AWS uh, so now we come back here we have the the uh, Linux folder create right so if you check here we have our data our data is here right um, yeah that is it um, see the setting is very easy to do uh, like most of the settings in Splunk it's not really complicated but then the ramifications are large uh, it, it, you need to really calculate and you need to really know what you're doing that's why um, I wouldn't really uh, recommend that you do the setting on your own always engage with PS or work with your salespeople uh, and they will set you on the right track uh, and, and as always I leave the um, links to the documentation and you can always reach out to me uh, and I can try to help you guys out thank you